All right, folks, buckle up for another wild ride on Paternity Court. Today, we've got the sensational case of Miss Ellis versus Mr. Koga, where memories are hazy, denials are flying, and the truth is harder to find than a unicorn riding a rainbow. Miss Ellis strides into the courtroom with a claim that her baby daddy is none other than Mr. Koga, who she has had a steamy fling with three years ago. But hold your horses, because Mr. Koga is playing the denial card like a pro. He insists that they were just innocent school friends, never once venturing into the realm of intimate encounters. And guess what? He even refuses to take a DNA test. Bravo, Mr. Koga, bravo! Oh, the plot thickens. Miss Ellis counters with a sassy retort, saying that sex wasn't an issue when they did the deed. Apparently, it only became unbearable during the act itself. Well, 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 looks like we've got ourselves a connoisseur of convenient excuses. But wait, there's more. Miss Ellis decided to keep Mr. Koga out of the picture when she found out she was pregnant because she had another beau who agreed to play daddy. Yet just before the baby's arrival, Mr. Koga had the audacity to pop up and ask if he's the father. Talk about a bombshell revelation, folks. The judge and everyone else in the courtroom must be gasping for breath. So why would you be asking her if the child was yours? Fast forward three years, and here we are with Miss Ellis honoring her late boyfriend's wish to spill the paternity beans to Mr. Koga. But our dear Mr. Koga is more lost than a sock in the dryer. First he claims they never did the deed, and now he's baffled by the sudden revelation that he's being accused of fatherhood. Oh, the tangled web we weave. I'm sorry to hear that. And before he passed away, he, he told me that I should tell him, but I didn't want to. Enter Mrs. Koga, the supportive wife, who takes the witness stand to defend her man's honor. According to her, they never ever came close to sharing a passionate moment, and she believes the child is just being conveniently pinned on her hubby. But hold on to your wigs, ladies and gentlemen, because Miss Ellis has a final bombshell up her sleeve. She boldly declares that she and Mr. Koga did the deed not once, but twice. Cue the heated argument between the ladies and the judge's order for a DNA test. Sex this time upstairs in this house, and you had already had sex in the in car. car. And the moment of truth arrives, folks. The defendant returns to the courtroom, and the judge double checks if Mr. Koga's memory is really as bad as he claims. Lo and behold, the results are in. And guess what? Drum roll, please. Mr. Koga, the master of denial, is declared the father. Well, 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 looks like we have a case of selective memory. Or should we say, I don't remember anything, but I'm still shocked syndrome. You are Zamarian's father. Oh, Mr. Koga, you never fail to entertain us with your memory lapses. But kudos to you for stepping up and finally acknowledging your little one. It's about time, my friend. Now go forth and embrace your newfound fatherhood like a true champion of amnesia. Miss Julissa is on a mission to prove that Mr. Glover is the father of her child. But oh no, he's not having any of it. He's singing the classic tune of She Slept With Half The Town and now she wants to pin the kid on me because I'm famous and rich. Ah, what a catchy melody, Mr. Glover. But wait, folks, Miss Julissa is here to set the record straight. She vehemently denies being a gold digger and claims that she's being nothing but honest in her pursuit of justice. The nerve of Mr. Glover accusing her of sleeping around. How dare he question the loyalty of a saint like Miss Julissa. So You're an irresponsible man right? who needs to man up and take care of your child. And we're gonna prove her, today man. that you are the I father her, around. Miss Julissa fires back, declaring with utmost certainty that Mr. Glover is the one and only baby daddy. And she's not stopping there. She demands that he takes responsibility for his actions. Oh, the audacity of wanting a deadbeat dad to step up. Shame on you, Miss Julissa, for expecting basic parental responsibility. He was That's playing mind games telling me he was going back to school, but he was making it work with his ex. But hold on to your hats, folks, because Miss Julissa has a bombshell in store. She accuses Mr. Glover of playing mind games to shirk his daddy duties. Apparently, he thinks that during one of their oh-so-dramatic breakups, she was off gallivanting with other men. Enter Mr. Glover's sister, stage left, with her own grand entrance. She's here to spill the tea and prove that Miss Julissa was caught red-handed in a hotel room with one of her other guys. 
Wait, there's an explanation. Miss Julissa skillfully spins a tale of innocence. That man in the hotel room? Oh, he was just a helpful soul who kindly provided her with accommodation because she conveniently left her debit card at home. Smooth move, Miss Julissa. Very smooth. We can all relate to those forgetful moments that lead us into compromising situations, right? Oh, and let's not forget that Mr. Glover signed the birth certificate and has been playing daddy for a good 10 months. But deep down, he's always had that little nagging doubt, hasn't he? Bravo, Mr. Glover, for your exceptional timing and unwavering commitment to doubt paternity after a substantial time investment. Every day he talking about when he want to leave the house, it's not his baby, so I told him, yeah, it, it's not your baby then. Now, dear viewers, after the courtroom has been flooded with declarations, explanations, and claims, it's time for the grand finale. The judge, in all her wisdom, decides to unleash the DNA results. Drum roll, please. Brace yourselves, folks, because this DNA roller coaster is about to take a wild turn. You are the father. Oh, uh -huh, so where's my Miss Gabriella marches into the courtroom, armed with the noble quest of proving that her adorable duo, Aliana and Noah, belong to Mr. Horatio. But alas, Mr. Horatio, with all his doubts and a rich family in tow, refuses to take any responsibility. He believes this is just a ploy to get her hands on his family's fortune. Ah yes, because having kids is such a get-rich-quick scheme. But hold on tight, folks, because Miss Gabriella is not one to back down. She boldly claims that the DNA test Horatio and his dear old mother conducted was as fake as a toupee in a hurricane. According to her, it was all just a feeble attempt to silence the truth. Bravo, Miss Gabriella, for calling out the DNA charade. We talked later, and he was still in shock, telling me that he didn't want to have a baby with someone he did not love. In a shocking twist, Gabriella reveals that when she first shared the news of her pregnancy with Horatio, he quickly retreated, claiming he wasn't ready to father children with someone he wasn't seriously involved with. But wait, there's more. Horatio's ever-supportive sister pipes up, claiming she saw a man in Gabriella's phone who looked suspiciously like Aliana and another man who resembled Noah. Oh, the doubts are spreading faster than gossip at a family union. Fear not, because Horatio has his defense ready. He declares that he's been there for both kids, despite his nagging doubts. So what did he do? He took matters into his own hands, conducting a DIY DNA test at home. And guess what? The results came back negative. But hold your applause, folks, because Gabriella, the ultimate skeptic, refuses to believe it. After all, she wasn't present during the test. Oh, the audacity of demanding authentic results. How dare she question the scientific accuracy of a home DNA test? So now we've administered a new test because the bottom line is I can't accept the results of that home test. Okay. But then the moment of truth arrives, folks. The paternity results for Aliana are revealed, and lo and behold, Horatio is not the father. The judge's fury ignites like a raging inferno, scolding Gabriella for her web of lies that have ensnared the court and tormented poor Horatio and his family. Tears flow, but the judge, oh, she shows no mercy, for it is the children who deserve to know their true father. Bravo, Judge Lauren, the heartbreaker of justice. Is that lie you told saying you weren't sleeping with nobody else? But wait, there's more heartbreak to come. The next results unveil that even Noah is not Horatio's biological son. And there it is, folks. Gabriella's tower of lies comes crashing down upon her, leaving her in a whirlwind of shame and offense. She musters up a feeble apology, admitting she knows who the real father is.